All right. Good morning, guys. So it rained, it snowed, it rained, it wind, it was snowing, it was windy. So it's 28 degrees this morning, and it's already like 11 o'clock this morning. Um, the hip piriformis muscle is aggravated, to say the least. Um, cold doesn't seem to do um, piriformis syndrome very uh, uh, not accommodating anyway for the movement. So I woke up this morning, typical of what I've been suffering with with the piriformis. So <laughs> although I am kind of famous for the glute, um, the glute is not working. Piriformis is a muscle that's right about here, deep in the muscle belly. It goes up underneath the gluteus maximus. It actually helps the leg rotate. So anytime my leg moves, it also affects the hip flexors, which is what started the piriformis in the first place. Started with a tight hip flexor that then aggravated the glute, which affects the abdominal wall. It affects the low back, the IT band. IT band actually runs from the back of the sciatic nerve or along with the sciatic nerve from the hip all the way down to the ankle. So where I feel pain on most parts is this part of my knee and this part of my hamstring that comes all the way up. It will tighten up the hamstring, which is what's actually pulling on that knee. So the reason why sometimes that I actually do um, have a limp is from the adductor muscle in the middle or your inner thigh. This is always in pain. It's always kind of uh, just tender. The movement is really hard right here, right up on, in the intercostal muscles. So it affects the outside part of the hip when you're actually got to move your leg. Your hip is your mobility no matter what, whether it's for your shoulders or any type of upper movement. So again, if I'm pushing or pulling, my glute has to stabilize that upper body movement, which is why I'm having issues. When I wake up in the morning, like a morning like today, the knee is already tight. So while the knee is tight, it's actually affecting this part of the bottom part of my solis, which is the calf muscle that runs from the knee down to the ankle. So this feels tight, this feels tight, which automatically goes here. You're gonna ping pong muscle pain. So some of this may have even started from that bad right shoulder, um, I think it was almost four years ago now, three years ago. So it went from this shoulder to this hip, um, and again, the pain is on this side of the knee to this side of the hip because of the hamstrings in the back being tight. So what I have to do this morning is I've already taken a hot shower, so it'll kind of loosen up the muscle. I've tried to play with it both ways. Do I roll first and then stretch or stretch and then roll? It doesn't really matter because I've been dealing with this. This is now March. I've been dealing with this since probably uh, July, June, July. Um, so I'm going to show you first the, the, the first thing that I would do is I have two different size yoga blocks depending upon my pain. So the yoga block is a great way for me to straighten out my hips. Um, women are more prone to having the hip misalignment. Um, mine definitely do and that's definitely from the days I played uh, college softball. So I played from the time I was, well, my father had me out in the backyard with a ball when I was about three. So um, up until I was 20, I was behind home plate from nine years old to 20. So that's the other reason why my legs kind of have already said like, yeah, enough is enough on the overload. So I'm gonna actually take this small block because of the way that I'm actually feeling today. I'm gonna turn this way so that you can actually see where I'm gonna put it. So I'm not gonna lay all the way across that yoga mat, but I'm gonna actually make sure that it comes right up on the top part of my hip and I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to lay flat. So I'm going to bring those legs flat and I'm just going to keep my body straight in alignment. I'm going to supersede or go super fast through everything so you don't actually have to go through my um, entire regimen. But I would actually sit here like this for about 15 minutes. Let the, let the body just let it fall. Relax and breathe and um, don't hold your breath because sometimes if you're in pain um, but what I'm actually feeling I'm feeling the stretch of the low back I'm also feeling the stretch of that quad and hip flexor so that's part of the reason it's not just your hip um, that you're going to stretch out up, up on the block um, now depending upon if, if your hips are normal 
you could do both sides but with this one here I'm just going to go a little faster today and just do the one bad side and then at that point once I get done with that I'm going to go ahead while I'm in that position go ahead and, and it's what you would do for an IT bound which is that again goes down that side of that leg you get a bridge so you can come up and bridge and squeeze come up and bridge your abdominal core muscles are your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, and your abdominus muscles. So that is the reason why you could feel abdominal pain all on the external portion of your torso with the piriformis syndrome. So I'm going to go then, I'm going to go do the IT band stretches, crossing the leg over, pushing that knee. Let the body do its first natural thing is just let your body get in the position. This isn't actually bad. Um, back in August, September, October, I couldn't have done this. I wasn't able to actually do it unless I actually lifted up my leg and put it over. So if I already actually gotten to be a lot better than I had, I'm going to take my foot and I'll push my knee and I'm pushing on my knee and I'm pulling on my foot so that I can actually stretch that inner thigh. I can actually feel my hip wanting to go this way. That's how tight that glute muscle is. And then after that point, you're going to try to bring that leg up. I, I used to be able to do, on that side, I could do this. That is obviously, as you see, it's not going quite yet, which is the tightness of that glute, not allowing my hip to tilt. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit if I can. You can also do, you can grab a band, a rope, um, a stretching band and pull it yourself. So again, once you go, went from that, now I'm going to go ahead. I can actually even take the ball and right the bottom part of the glute. That is actually where that muscle is. I'm not going to lay up on that tennis ball. This is the same thing as if you put an elbow in that muscle. This muscle goes so deep into the muscle that you can actually fill it into the pelvis region. I would actually sit here and kind of roll on it as well, but I'm going to sit here for just a second so that you kind of get the idea that you're actually going to, it's the same as putting a fist in that muscle. It's a muscle spasm is actually what, what creates this um, syndrome in the first place. So you just want to unlock that tightness of that muscle. Now, after I've done all of that type of movement, that's when you go ahead and you could actually roll. So, same as like a rolling pin uh, with a pie, I would start from my knee. You're going with the line of the duration of the muscle. So, I'm going to slightly lock, or unlock the knee so it's not tight. I'm going to start from here. And yeah, that, that didn't feel too good this morning. So, I'm going to take the runner stick. And I'm just going to go up and down the muscle. It's going to take out, or try to take out, most of the knotting in the leg. Now, because it's a little inflamed, I will probably wind up taking a, a leave today so that the naproxen um, is an anti-inflammatory, not a painkiller. And you'll see that I'm going for fast reasons, but you're going to go up and down that entire quad right up in the front. So again, there's four muscle groups in that front part of the leg, which is why they call it a quad. But the intercostal muscles are what's highly affected. And then what I'm going to do is once I've gotten to that point, I'm going to bring the knee up and now I'm going to roll that outside, which is what hurt the most earlier. So again, you're going to roll that calf. And so you, you want to make sure that you're really push that stick in. Um, and I'll tell you, even just that little bit of, of going through um, that small amount of movement. Now I'm going to roll over to my side so that I can actually try to hit. It's a little hard to do it on your own, but I'm going to hit that IT band right up on the so top of the hip. You're going to roll it down and just... Rolling should be about 15 minutes by the time I've done from the front. Now it's a little hard with a roller stick to actually do the hamstring completely. 
Um, and I should actually have a longer stick, but you get the idea is that you roll the back of the hamstring as well. So that's basically, let's go super fast with that. So the floor movements that will help stretch the piriformis syndrome um, muscles, your, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes. Um, we did the IT band stretch. We did um, that type of movement. Now, you can start out first where you're getting your doggy style hands and knees on your on your foot. Obviously, we can go here. We can go here, which again, this is way better than it used to be. But a harder one is to actually external rotate that foot outward and bring it back in. Outward and bring it back in. Part of the reason is that it makes this inner thigh and the outside of the glute have to rotate that foot. That is the muscle that is actually in a spasm. Once you went to that point, you can actually add a band. So what I'm going to do, then I'm just going to take this band, put it on my foot. I'm going to run it across my body out this side. I'm going to pull on that band. Coming down, pulling with that band, I'm going to external rotate, external rotate, and external rotate. I would do this for about one to two minutes. And I can actually, just with that little bit of trying to show you guys how to, how to uh, loosen up this glute, my leg already feels a lot better and I have to still actually go back after I show you guys all this and do it myself in regular speed. And again, I can actually take this band up overhead, I bring it up on my shoulder, and I can kick back and do the old fashioned donkey kick. That helps the knee, the quad, and the glute strengthen up that quad muscle that's weakening because of my knee and my glute not operating. I will actually, this will take me uh, all in all about 45 minutes to actually go through all the stretches and all the, the good stuff like that. So what we just did in 10, 12 minutes um, triple that. But if you're feeling that, that low back pain, abdominal strain, and the hip flexors getting tight, the glutes getting tight, these are all the things uh, that can actually help you uh, get back into your mobility. And so until then, um, this is day three of my diet. This is uh, how I'm going to get this glute to unlock so I can actually get back to running um, in the hoodie. Because, yeah, if you train like a boxer, you will look like a boxer. Um, until then, ciao, guys.